Hi, I'm Dr. Romano. I'd like to go over with you today something called enzyme specificity and efficiency. Let's have a quick look at this. Um, I want to define a number, and we could, we'll put this in nice, easy to understand language. The turnover number. Turnover number is also known as the K-cat. K is for constant. And what the turnover number simply is, it's the number of moles of substrate that can react to form product per mole of enzyme in a period of time. So essentially, when I say the turnover number, it's how much product that we're getting. So we want to make sure we understand that. So for example, carbonic anhydrase has one of the highest K-cats of all, and I wrote down it's 600,000 per second. So that means this is the number of molecules that are formed in each second by this um, enzyme. That's an enormous amount compared to acetylcholine esterase, which has a K-cat of only 25,000. So as you can see, different enzymes have different turnover numbers. Now, a good definition of the K-cat is K-cat is equal to the Vmax divided by ET. Now, ET stands for the enzyme concentration with no number of active sites. So if you knew all the active sites on an enzyme, you knew that concentration, and you multiplied it by the K-cat, that gives me the Vmax. All right, that's easy enough. So we should have an understanding. If you see K-cat, you know it's the turnover number. Now, the Km. Now, this stands for the michaelius menten constant. When you go to grad school, you'll learn in biochemistry something called michaelius menten kinetics. But for, for now, what I want you to understand is that what it simply means is it's the amount of substrate needed to get me to half Vmax. That's a guaranteed test question. So think of it like a cup of coffee in the morning. If you only need like a half a cup of coffee, that would be the, to get you to half speed. That would be what we call the KM. So the KM is the amount of substrate needed to get you half Vmax. It's also another way you can look at it, it's an, it's an indicator of binding. For instance, if you have a low KM, what does that mean? You mean? It means you only need a small amount to get you going to have speed. So low KM means there's high substrate affinity. A high KM means that you need a lot of it to get you going. So that means there would be a low substrate affinity. So we want to make sure we have that understood. So two ways to look at the KM which is just a combination of rate constants. It's the amount of substrate needed to get to half Vmax, or it can give me an indication about how strong the binding is. Now, let's do an example. Let's say I say to you, and this was actually one of my old exam questions, so I'm not gonna tell you how long I've been teaching biochemistry, you'll think I'm an old geezer, but I've been teaching biochemistry course a long time. Um, Penicillinase has a Km of 05 millimolar, and lysozyme has a Km of 006 millimolar. Now, when you first look at this, you would say, oh my God, you only need a small amount um, of lysozyme to get the desired effect, that this would be the more efficient enzyme. However, it turns out that the efficiency of penicillinase is greater than the efficiency of lysozyme. And you're saying, how can that be possible since the KM was larger for penicillinase? Well, here's the key formula that we're going to bring into the DAT and the OAT and the MCAT. The efficiency of an enzyme is not just related to the KM. It's equal to the ratio between the two constants. So E efficiency is KCAT over KM. So to be really efficient, what's the ideal? You want to have a what? Small KM and a large K-cat. So a small KM means less substrate is needed for enzyme to reach half Vmax. So that's good so far. A small KM indeed suggests lysozyme is the better enzyme. But, what did I teach you about the word but? Nothing good follows the word but. So hear me out. Even though it looks like we're really favoring, we're really favoring lysozyme, but you must also consider 
the K cat. So just because it had a small value for KM doesn't automatically mean that it's gonna be the efficient enzyme. Evidently, penicillinase has a much higher K cat, which compensated for the, for the KM value being a little higher. So as you can see, both of these were factors. So the ratio of KCAD over KM will decide the efficiency. So just because the KCAD is high, that doesn't necessarily mean you got an efficient enzyme. If the KCAD is high and the KM is high, then that can nullify it. I got a question on this in the Dat Destroyer that I think you'll enjoy, but this should put it in perspective. So when we get to those questions in Destroyer, I'm gonna assume you understand what I mean by K KM. So if I drew a, um, if I drew say for example, just real quick, if I if I drew say we had um, weight on this axis and this was the concentration of substrate, and I gave you a curve, and we all know this is V max, right? This is approaching V max. So right here say is halfway. This would be half V max. All you would do is come down, and boom you would be at the half point and that substrate concentration would be equal to the KM. I hope that gave you a good idea. I think that'll be enough for the DAT, the old exam and the MCAT. If you know that much, I think you're in good shape. You'll take up more details of this in the big biochemistry course. All right, um, I'll see you in study group and maybe we'll have a question on this down the road. Bye-bye.